Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury CCA3 with another match. It's going to be between Mankuki and Gore on Tomb of Heroes, as usual. We'll see how that goes. We've seen Mankuki actually playing a lot, and he's doing pretty well, but Gore is Gore. He is Gore. And he is player two, so we're not going to see what he's up to yet, but. Mangoki going for Vekir, Gode going for Grekim. So we have a Vekir versus everything else matchup tonight. Lots of Vekir, but also all three matchups. Admittedly, with different players for the last one. So Gode going for Grekim. Not sure what he's going to go for yet. While Mangoki, I'm certain he's going to go for his normal foundation rush. Although, what we saw last game. No, he's going with all three. I was about to say, last game we saw that he only went with the Shin. Sorry, yeah, the Shin and Tethvir, leaving the Zion Beer at home to build economy. But this game. Nope, he is going straight forward with all three starting infantry into Gore's base, while Gore is still setting up. He has his Arcticus going out in a defensive position. He has no further Octos built yet, surprisingly enough. Yeah, no Octos built yet for the RPs. I don't know why. No, there's one. And... Mongugi is... Okay, like I said, he is sending his infantry out. The inventory going out will be just doing their thing, building foundations, attacking as best they can. We'll see what Godad does to respond to that. But at this point, he is going for more of an economic opening. He is actually getting... Oh, no, he's not. I thought he was going to be getting some Q Plasma in order to deal with early rushes, getting Octopi. You know, one cycle of Q Plasma gets you enough for an Octopod, but Godad is not apparently going for that. Godad is instead going for more LC. More just general economy construction. Yeah, there's another Liquid Crystal RP being built up while Monkuki is halfway through the 118 mark. So Monkuki has not built any Zion Beers as base as normal. He is at the one minute mark though, so we'll just stick with Gota's point of view for now. Because Gota is going to be showing us what exactly is going on here. Six LC RPs right now. However, actually Monkuki jumping forward when he hits and sees Gota is going for Grekim. Sees the Arcticus, not sure why he's going for the Arcticus first. Looks like he is jumping back to the one minute mark and probably changing up his order slightly. But now he knows what Gode is up to. And Gode, however, should also know what Monku he's up to. Probably not even going to look from the looks of it. He's just... He's continuing to build up. Actually, wait, what is he doing? Like, Monku, he did encounter a Faro from the looks of it. Jumping back. Yeah, that was a Faro that went for scouting. Actually, Sebi Faro Pair, was Gode going for a proxy? Well, if he was, that didn't work out too well. However, it doesn't matter. Gode is getting attacked at the 319 mark. He does have units in place. He does have enough of an economy to build up... Actually, fairly large... In fact, he can build up a couple of Octos right now. Monkey does have a massive economy. Nearly 500 Liquor Crystal. And surprisingly, not yet... Okay, what the heck is going on here? I guess Gode sent out a Sepian Faro forward, and that was a bit of a mistake. Well... Gode from, let's see, jumping back to this point of view, 142 mark, yeah, it looks like Sepi and Faro, no, just one of them, just the Faro, but, wait, that makes no sense. Oh yeah, there's the Sepi, there's the Faro down here. So the Faro went out to scout, the Sepi stayed home, and Gode gonna have to echo that out. Because right now, in this timeline, actually, both the, both the wake of the green and red time waves shows no construction in Gode's base. That is a little bit problematic. For obvious reasons. So yeah, Godot will want to echo that out. We'll want to get these guys back into production mode. And hopefully for his sake, not lose too many RPs. Because the RP orders will be there. But yeah, as you can see, the Seppi trying to build RPs. But can't due to the lack of a pro-generating Faro. And the Faro going back again. Going forward again. Godot apparently forgot to undo that order. I mean, he's got to be careful. Does not want to undo too many orders. Not Doesn't want to do undo production orders. Because undoing production orders would mean losing all the RPs he has built so far, having to use Chrono Energy again to build them, while Mongoogie back at the 120 mark, not echoing this, actually echoing partially, keeping a Zion Veer at home, building up an economy, so that was a complete feint on top of that, Gode is having to rebuild, losing a Faro, echoing that out, but still losing that Faro temporarily, reducing the number of RPs he builds, increasing the amount of Chrono Energy he has to spend in order to get his economy up and running the way he wanted it to, and his economy nowhere near as strong either. And expecting a massive attack, well, Monkuki going for just a standard scout with economic construction in his base. So Monkuki is 
possibly out mind gaming Gota at this point. Gota is, I'm not sure what he was planning on doing here. He's definitely back into it. He's got his Octopod up. He has RPs built up as well, but yeah, Gota unfortunately is farther behind than he'd like to be. I think he's going for a counter attack. He's linked everything to the Arcticus. I'm guessing this is going to be a massive attack. Send the Octopus, sorry, Octopod and Octos to uh, possibly to Monkey's base. At least have them up for defense. Yep, the Octopod is up on the Arcticus, and I think we are going to see. There's a massive attack coming in here. So yeah, Gode is going for an all-out attack. Possibly a counterattack on Monkuki. We'll see, though. There it is. Yes, an, an attack out. Getting rid of Monkuki, scouting Shin... Well, the Shinbir alone alone. That might be a hint. Gode might realize the Shinbir alone means that there isn't actually a massive rush happening. But at the same time, he might think, well, Monkuki is not going for a massive rush. He's going to go for more of an economic build, which means he's weak. So Gode going for a timing attack from the looks of it. He has his Octo, he has his entire base he's timing attack, possibly with a proxy triad to try to support that later on. Though Gode does not have a great economy to support this. He has, well, basically three RPs. That's all he has. Do you remember Gode's point of view, the three minute mark? He is getting a few more RPs, but even with three and one, he is actually going to be able to support this. If he goes for that attack with the triad, he will actually be able to deal a fair amount of damage. Yeah, I should point out that Monkuki has a comm hub over... Oh, can't see it from his point of view. But he has a comm hub over right by Gode's base. He knows exactly what's going on, and of course it is cloaked. However, the Faro will spot it. I think... Or... Will it? No, the Faro going a bit too far away. I don't think it's going to spot it. We'll see, though. I, oh, it will. The Faro just barely spots it, and the Octopod does use that scouting information to kill it. However, I think this is going to be a distraction. Because of this, Monkuki has more time. The Octopod is not in his base, and that is not going to be there to counter the inevitable Zion Pulsar, so Monkuki has quite a bit of a chance to build up. He can build up a Zion Pulsar. The Octopod's not going to be in place to deal with it. Like this Octopod right here, that is not going to have a chance to deal with it, and without that Octopod, it's going to be very problematic. Because Zion Pulsar, three Zion Pulsars are being built in this depot. And those three Zion Pulsars are going to be just killing everything. Even with the Octopod there, it would be rather difficult, but without the Octopod, it's going to be impossible. And Gore, he has... No Seppi? Did he, did he lose a Seppi? Okay, it looks like he's rebuilding his Seppi. He's rebuilding his Seppi in the middle of the map. He wants to set that up. There we go. There's the Seppi. And from there, he'll probably build up another Octopod or two. He has the resources for it, and he definitely needs to build two or three more Octopods. If he does that, he'll have a good chance. And he's got the Triad set up. He's got two more Octopods. Okay, he is... He's solid for now, but he needs the Octopus to build up, and he needs everything to be synced up as well. Monkuki is ready. He has four Zion Pulsars, no further ones being constructed so far, but he has four of them up. And they all have skipped teleport, by the way, so Octos are going to be of little use. The Octopus, however, are the counter. And a Zion Turcher as well. Monkuki is well equipped. And of course, this is in Monkuki's home turf, and we all know how... Well, okay, those who have just started watching this, don't... But you will soon find out how good Monkuki's Depot Micro is. His jump back into the Depot to heal up his units. That's what he does. That is his signature thing. And that's going to be problematic for Gota if he tries to attack Monkuki on his home turf. See if it works out though. I mean, his proxy again, building up a couple more Octopods and Octos. Well, not a bad army for Monkuki. Definitely has a lot of firepower, but sorry, for Gota. But this is an all-in. Make no mistake, this is an all-in. This is everything that Gota has. Absolutely everything. He has four, and two, four LC, one QPRP in his main base. And this is his army. And it is split up as well. One of the Zion Pulses isn't going to take enough damage to go down. Thankfully for it, sir, for the Octo, I should say, the Octos in front are tanking all the damage. However, Gota is trying to retreat. However, that's an attack move retreat, causing one of the Octopods to die in vain. More Octopods are going to have to be built, and Gota is going to have to basically set up his units around here. Undo orders. Make sure they don't die. No, Faro and Seppi need to not go forward. If the Faro and Seppi go forward, they're going to die. They go into the proxy position they had before. They are going to die. And I'm sure Gode is aware of that. He needs to make sure he has undone those orders. Because if he has not, he's going to lose. And jumping forward, just Gode double checking what happens on the green time wave. Checking the hypotheticals. Checking the future. But figuring he has no real chance. Actually, what the? Really? He figures he has no real chance. He had... I... I think he had enough. Kind of hard to tell. I mean, let's just double check that. Point. No, I can't. Well, 
Yeah, I guess so. So yeah, Monkey won. Little surprising, but that's how it went. Apparently, so Goda didn't think he could win. Anyway, that is that is gonna be it for me tonight. I only had those replays up. So I hope you enjoyed that. And oh, somebody pointed pointed out in the chat that Goda would have died. Well, I'll believe you. I mean, it was kind of hard to tell because that battle, Gode just looked at it and I didn't manage to check it in time, so. Okay, let's think about it. Four Octopods, four Octos, that'd be Faro against Monkuki's entire base. Yeah, with the Depot Micro, I could see that. The Zion Pulses would have gone down, but the Zion Turtles would have been a pain in the butt to take out. And of course, with the Depot and further units coming, actually, Monkuki has so much in the bank, he could rebuild this army twice over. Okay, yeah, I see that. Definitely see that. So yeah, Goldei didn't have much of a chance. That all-in came in far too late. And that was probably the big problem. Actually, on Tomb of Heroes, I don't... I don't know if I'd really encourage an all-in in the first place. Tomb of Heroes is a fairly large map. It's kind of hard to tell because it has a fairly small rush distance, but... This map is huge. Like, 360 by 360. That That's how big this map... Actually, you're in the present. Like, that is how big this map... Is. Come on. I mean, better timing. Okay, whatever, we're gonna have the blur effects gonna deal with that. But yeah, this map has a really, really, really big size. It it's 360 by 360. It is large. So a proxy attack with this that takes a couple minutes to get in. Hard to time properly. Anyway. That is going to be it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.